Because I was like, all right, like I'm using Twitter, you know, I'm talking about stocks, using the hashtag, but it was so full of like non-contextual, I'm not going to call it spam, but just spam. So, you know, I went to the store to buy a green apple is not, hey, I was in the apple store, it's packed, I'm wrong apple. Like, yeah. how do you separate the chatter? Yeah, because you can't so, search by Apple. You're just yeah. going to get everything. Back then, it was a BlackBerry. Yeah. You know, there was no iPhone. So I yeah, remember... That's right. God, sent, BlackBerry. I sent, I sent a uh, BlackBerry message to Fred Wilson with the dollar sign. I was like, oh, dollar sign, R-I-M-M, going to the moon, or whatever I said to him. And he sent me back an email saying, that's genius. Welcome back to the Steady Trade Podcast here with Kim, my co-host. Uh, Steven's off today. He's probably at the bar, of course. It is midnight in Dubai. But, uh, you know, we've got somebody that I really look forward to speaking with today. Um, you know, I got started in day trading. You know, I talk about this a lot back during the 2007 crash. You know, I, I spent years and years trying to take the quote-unquote traditional approach, never making any money trading, well, not trading, buying and holding boring stocks. We get the 2007 crash. I'm like, hey, there's got to be something different. You know, there's got to be a better way. And at that time back then, I still remember Wall Strip was a, you know, I guess you'd call it kind of a video podcast for lack of a better term. Yeah. I've stumbled across that found Howard's book. Um, actually, our ghost, our, our guest, I was trying to was trying to save it to, for the tease, but Howard Lindzen uh, is our guest today. Um, found his book, The Wall Street Edge, and we were actually just talking off screen. You know, I'm still using really st simple strategies from that book that I found way back, you know, 2009. You know, that's 11 years ago. And, you know, had been a great admirer of Howard. Um, I joined Twitter, you know, FinTwit, as they say, back in, you know, 2009, I think, and, and Howard was one of the early adopters of that. And, uh, you know, he's just kind of been around forever. Um, got Kim here as well. So welcome, Howard. Looking forward to chatting hey, with you today. Hey, let's so. chat. I, uh, I appreciate the intro. Just, you're in better shape than me. So wait a minute, how old are you? I am 48. Yep, yep. So. Ah. Yeah, so we're we're the old guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's about this moment in time, it's a, it's actually two thousand. It's a different version of 08, Obviously, mm. we got a health, we got a health crash and a health crisis. We had a financial crisis. Now it could be a financial crisis, and everybody's got the same issues. Yep. Oh man, Davy Day Trader. Oh <laughs> Robin Hood. This is bad. Well, no, it isn't bad. It's it, it takes crashes to bring new people into the game. And we are, we have a global thermonuclear game. So so let's get get a little bit of context because I, I want to talk about the wild days we're in. You know, this is the wildest I've seen in 15 years. Give kind of a just just for the listener out there. You mind giving just kind of a quick like timeline of you know what when you started, what got you started. You know, kind of kind of just so I can and and even for me because I, I can't really remember you know when you started in the finance world. So. Yeah, it was, you know, I'm not a stock person. What, I'm sorry, I am, I love stocks. Sorry, I, you know, and I grew up in Toronto, uh, like everybody else, my first experience with stocks, I lost money. I was probably too young and, and you know, but again, back then it was a stockbroker that called you with an idea and that was the gatekeeper. Today, the gatekeeper is your own will of, is your friend. Say, oh, I opened a Robinhood account and they go, what's that? And you go, just open it. And whoever gets you to open one, that's your eyes just explode because the world is now at your fingertips. Everything's a data point and you can trade. The, the, what, what got me into the business was my first company that was successful. We just made, we were, we made so much money. We had to just, you know, it was, we were making so much money. We were like, oh, we'd let you do something. <laughs> what do you do with it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I had been a stockbroker post-college just to stay in the U.S., Canadian. So I had, you know, I had all my degrees. But in order to uh, stay legally in the country, I had to get a job. And it was Phoenix. It was after the recession. So I just, you know, there was no Craigslist. It was the, it was the phone book. And um, 
the uh, you just I circ- you're circling things in the newspaper, and it was stuck. You know, stock cold yeah. calling for you know, and that's that's wow. what the world of stocks was like back then. They gave you a phone and a phone book, and just like the movie Wall Street, and you smiled and dialed. And the more now, calls, now <laughs> when when was this roughly? It's ninety one, and I had Not, two okay. master's degrees. So I okay. mean, like wow, the world was, you know the world is never easy. So pre even pre internet pre internet at that internet. point. I mean, there was an internet. I just I, I'm very fascinated with the show Halt and Catch Fire, which is uh, on Netflix now. It's a AMC show. It's about the early internet and computer market in the eighties. So I guess the computer market was yeah. It's a really great show. Mark Andreessen recommended it. It's four seasons. It's phenomenal history. Wow. It's kind of a history meets drama yeah. uh, soap opera of uh, the industry. So I didn't even know that. So it was, it's really was in the eighties, but in the nineties, exactly. Yeah. You know, I still paid someone a hundred dollars to type my grad essays. Like I didn't know how to type, but I didn't like <laughs> copy this and, and uh, add computers and I didn't, you know, so th- that was still acceptable then. Like if you had an essay to type, you either had a lot of liquid paper because that's what, that's how you corrected errors in the nineties. Right. Uh, there wasn't like fucking backspace and delete. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it's funny. <laughs> it was like dabbing my fucking essay. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, I was one of the few, you know, so I graduated high school in 92. So, so, mm-hmm. you know, in that high school era, I was one of the few, like one of two people that had a computer. So I actually wow. did that. I would, I would actually make side money typing people's papers because like you said, people got sick of the white out and, and, and the typewriter thing, you know? So if we just think about the market then versus the market today, and this is, we, we could, you know, if we're going to talk about investing. What's fascinating to me is how dumb the stock market really was in terms of growth investing. Like if we're, Listen, there's a million ways to trade and invest. But the fact is, land-based economy was a joke compared to the digital economy. Like, we are seeing such a revolution in the power of, like, imagination and market cap. Like, and this is what's freaking people out. is like, what defines overvalued in a world that has infinite storage capabilities? How do you, you know, it any kind of, textbook is thrown on the window, which is why Davy Barstool is making fun of Warren Buffett. It's hard yep. for Warren Buffett to go from an analog world to a digital world. Analog companies are going to be undervalued for the rest of time. That's what this, that's what this crisis was about. It's not about the fact that digital stocks are now overvalued. I won't even argue with that. They probably are. Sure. Because, but we don't have metrics that define, that can put them in a box. Yep. Whereas analog world is I mean, I mean, Warren can, Warren can look at warehouse space and, and, and trucking times and, and, and floor space out in some retailer. And, I mean, and how many people are in the world. Yeah. <laughs> size. But once you add the infinicity um, of store. Yep. This. Time, you know, yeah, this and, thing. <laughs> and attention uh yeah. of course there's going to be boundaries uh but we haven't figured that out yet so that's the opportunity that changed you know back then it was like okay if they open 10 stores like even in 07 my first wall strip when we did apple the math to me wasn't about the cloud the math with to me was like i love their six stores or their eight stores and i go well, they could build 300 of these and i'll buy the stock because there's that's going to go up just you know that was without the cloud so I think Apple yeah. remains massively undervalued, but there's not enough analysts to even try and figure out, like they've been firing analysts for the last 20 years. So, so in a world where there's no analysts in companies that like have never seen these market caps before, I'm not going to argue about valuation because it's a ridiculous argument. The real issue is be long until someone makes a good case that they have hit some wall, right? And none of these companies are hitting any form of wall in terms of growth. So Twilio is growing faster last quarter than it's ever grown. Well, that doesn't even make sense. How does it like a 10 year old, 12 year old business grow faster? What well, is already growing fast? You know, how does zoom have the best quarter in the history? So you have that at the same time as the land-based company is a zombie. 
Yep. Like if we walk around the streets and look at, at uh, yeah. retail, we're like, oh, fuck. So it's very confusing. Time. You know, it's funny because, you know, you know, a lot of what a lot of what I'll do, like I, I do a lot of like Instagram lives, like like Kim had mentioned, you do a lot of live stuff too, just answering questions. And and, and it's funny you say that because like, you know, we had like a week or so ago, we had a bunch of these like like clothing companies that were running, you know, penny stock clothing companies are running. And I'm like, why? Why? I'm like, you got social media you got technology you got cryptos i'm like why are you asking me about american eagle i'm like look at other stuff i mean it's like it's like you're it's like i, I mean i know people always want to try to try and like value invest but i'm like yeah. we're talking about cheap stocks here you know it's like look for stuff that people are excited about who's excited about american eagle you know <laughs> yeah so i mean that's the opportunity is like it, everything's overvalued in digital but it really is because it's just interesting. In American Eagle, even if you're smart and you figured out what it's worth, you're going to have to convince a lot of people <laughs> to buy that stock to get it to move, right? So I'm looking for catalyst. We're already getting ahead of ourselves, but I'm looking for things that have catalysts. And for me, I'm looking for frictionless upside. So the 52 week highs, all time highs. Stuff that doesn't need the story is being told in price and volume, and the fact that the company is doing well, um, and therefore, I don't have to convince a million other people to get on board. My job mm -hmm. then is to just manage that position. Whereas if I am kidding myself that I have enough money to move a stock that's a penny stock, mm -hmm. yeah, it's fun to try maybe, but it's a waste of time. Where I've learned enough by saying, "Listen, let me fish where the fish are." Mm -hmm. Great white sharks that are out there doing their thing. I'm just going to follow the great white sharks, feed, not get too ahead of myself, right? And it's a system that's not sexy. It's a system that's not perfect, but it's a system that works. Great white sharks, as long as you can control your ego and kind of move with the tide, <clears throat> there's plenty of money, to, <clears throat> plenty of money to be made. You know, probably day trading too. I'm not a day trader. I, 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 emotionally, I'm not wired to sure. manage a lot of positions. <clears throat> not for lack of trying, but you know, certain people can do certain things. The um, how do you keep your ego in check? You personally, just curious, because you you seem to do a good job of that. As I just kind of follow you and watch you for a while, you 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 have a good sense of humor. You don't take yourself too seriously. How do you do that? A lot of it is just uh, genetically maybe luck. Um, so, you know, there's some of that. I think the other thing is, you know, writing is how you do it. So you guys are doing your YouTube show, which is, you know, whether you have two viewers or 2,000, keeps you honest to somebody, um, which is great. It's a form of journaling. Like yep. there's a record of you guys making a position. You have to be thoughtful about it. You can, you can promote it and be – and do all kinds of stuff and then delete the, the episodes where you're wrong. And that's, <laughs> no, I mean, it happens all well, day. Well, we, we number, we number them all. So, so, so we screwed up <laughs> there. We, we, we can't fall out of sequence. <laughs> yeah, but people do like what I'm saying on Twitter. Yeah, so yeah. in building stock twits, those were the things that bothered us. And we tried to mm. do a little things that would make it different than Twitter. You know, do people appreciate it? No, I mean, some people do because they yeah. realize that like, how am I going to trust somebody on Twitter if they can delete their tweets where they were wrong? So immediately yeah. I'll never use Twitter to follow somebody unless they're just sharing ideas and not pounding yeah. the table and taking bows and all those things. But the ego yeah. thing comes from writing. It comes from the fact that my daughter and my wife read this right daily posts and my wife or my daughter will say, "Woo, you're an ass. You're quite full of yourself right now. So <laughs> you're kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a, mo um, they rein it in when it gets out of hand. I think everybody, gets caught up, you have a streak, you have a streak or you hit a home run or, or someone tells you you're great. So it's a human, human nature to ego comes up and, and you have to bat it down. But I've set up these parameters of to be watched mm -hmm. by people. And uh, maybe I'd be more successful if I had a bigger ego. You know, I look at some of the people that do well and they're just smart and they have a big ego. Yeah, but my, you know, my thing is, is like, you know, it's like, you know, and obviously this is probably a, you know, controversial statement, but it's like, I, I never want to be a billionaire because I don't want to do what it takes to be a billionaire. You know, so now, you now if I sell, listen, if I build some startup and sell it for a billion, that's different. But like in finance, 
I mean, what you got to do to be a billionaire? It's like, man, I don't know if I want to be that guy, you know? <laughs> it's, a point. it's a good point. There's going to be many young billionaires, and I think there is no free pass to get to a billion. Um, so, yes, you have to step. I know some billionaires, and I know, and they seem like really great people, but it's a different life, you know? I like my life, which is I can pop into here, I can do this, I have my puppy working with. I, uh, my daughter downstairs. I mean, it's a lifestyle choice, right? Yeah. The, the reason I like the markets is it gives me a lot of freedom. Uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, my calling is more mentoring than it is managing money. Uh, we have a VC, you know, we're on our third fund. The fund's only 50 million. Our next fund will be 70 or 80 million. So it's not like we're going to be billionaires by managing money, but we're good at what we do. And we found our, our lane, yeah. you know, what makes, yeah. what makes, what makes people great is they stay in a lane for enough period of time and the markets allow you to do this better than anything. If you develop a strategy and you stick to your strategy, there'll be periods where you're, 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 you have drawdowns and there'll be periods where you have to adjust and make hard changes to your strategy because markets can change a little bit. Uh, but human behavior generally doesn't. So there, there are some things where you'll have to change, but if you do this for 10 or 20 years, uh, it's a, it's a very liberating, uh, field because it's a language right you're learning a mm -hmm. language you're learning how people express for themselves sure. through their emotions through trading their money yeah. and it's not for everybody yeah. it's, it's not fulfilling sometimes because you feel like money's just moving back and forth but um catching one great trend and and finding you know, something that that uh people didn't see or uh, is, 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 is really invigorating. No different than surfing, you know, surf with the paddles all day to catch one wave. If you talk to real good surfers, they, a lot of times they're not, you know, they're battling to just find one wave. And then when they, that wave comes, there's a lot of people on that wave, which is why like the surfer guy set up his own fucking lake in the middle of nowhere to create perfect waves. Because That's right. That's right. We just interviewed Shane Dorian Howard, actually just a couple of episodes ago. He's a big wave surfer and yeah. he's saying exactly what you're saying, like that finding that perfect one waiting for it. Yeah. And the market he's a trader does now too. all the work. Like yeah. you watch the all time high list, you're just seeing waves yeah. and you've got to find one that like you can identify with the company. And like right now for me, it's Spotify and Peloton. It seems so obvious, but it's just not obvious to a lot of people. And no, those are two of my favorites, man. Um, it's funny. Well, I, I think a lot of people's favorites. Yep. And, and, and <laughs> stocks going up, but at the same point, there's so many people when I say it, they go, Oh, I'm so overvalued. And, and it's like, who cares? I'm not going to have, I don't have to convince people. So whereas yeah. if I buy American Eagle or if I buy, you know, a stock with no revenue or a story, I'm now part of the gospel. I have to now get all these people to think. Mm. Whereas the Spotify train has left the station. The wave is ripping. So in the end, it's not like I discovered something that, but there's just a wave that people misunderstand and it's going to go on longer than people. It's going to create this incredible long ride and it won't be smooth, but it's already in motion. What's the misunderstanding, you think? The people that do misunderstand it, what is it that they see? Or what do they not see? Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, the point is, yeah. I, we could be wrong. It could crash tomorrow. So I don't mm -hmm. like to, to uh, look too deeply into it. I just see it. And I'm like, all yeah. right. And I have no opinion about, I love the company. I love the product. So I use it every day. Is it overvalued? I'll worry about that when it crashes. Um, but I try and just ride that wave and tune mm. out because it's, we're all telling people about it and people look at, you know, just running $20 a day. I can't explain it, you know? Yeah. Uh, just, well, it's funny. It's funny. I, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just this week I've been talking about Bel both Peloton and, uh, you know, and, and Spotify. And because, you know, it's, it's funny, we we're talking a little bit off camera, you know, one of the things I learned from your book, I mean, 11 years ago, I remember, I just remember reading, exactly stuff like peloton and spotify where it's like it's it's hot it's interesting to people is it at a 52 week high and and kim to answer your question i don't yeah. get it i don't get it but there's like this weird mental block people don't want to buy 52 week highs and i thank howard because i think i was that way and i was like because it was always yeah. like oh it's at a year high oh or five year highs it's too yeah. high but 
when you've got that story stock and people are in love with it and it's breaking out, especially, you know, I know you're not a day trader, but every day trader scan in the 52 week highs. So then you get that wow. self fulfilling prophecy, you know, it's because a little more volatility around the edge, just like a big wave. Like yep, if you yep. fall, it hurts. Mm. Like if you fall off a big wave, it hurts. You know, if you fall yeah. off a baby wave, it's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so these bigger waves really can hurt you. Uh, they, um, and they're not for everybody, which is great, yeah. you know, but yeah. I want to paddle with yeah. other people paddling. Yep. I don't want to convince yeah. everybody to head over to this cove. Yeah, so totally. Obviously that works too. It just doesn't work for me. So it's more about, yeah. hey, here, this is something that's working. Yep. Yeah. There's room for everybody. It's going to be volatile. It's going to have traders. It's going to have non-believers. It's going to have believers. But there's enough activity that a lot of people can get fed. And Actually, it, yeah. It, it's funny. I the Kim knows this. I bought a Peloton around Christmas specifically yeah. because of the outrage around the commercial or that, that Christmas commercial. Remember, yeah. everyone lost their mind. It was backfiring for him. COVID kind of took him off the hook there. But yeah. Yeah. true, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> that, I, 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 I dropped three grand on that bike just because I, I hate outrage culture so much. <laughs> <laughs> if the product sucked, you would have been pissed. Yeah, so exactly. It, yeah. Yeah. And I love that. Tesla. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Tesla would be zero if the product sucked. Like all yeah. the financial yeah. people who are, t are talking smack about it have a really good point. It's not lost on me. I don't yeah. own the fact, but it, it's not lost on me that the financials could be a mess and that he self deals. Come on in, Craig. That he self deals and, and, yeah, and he's got conflicts. But in the end, the customers love the product. So if you ordered that Peloton and you want to ship it back the next day, you are going to not only, you are going to be that person that not only returns the company and talks badly about it, but you'll probably short the stock. Sure. Cause you'll know something. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is true. Yeah. So, uh, and, then, and then it's funny you mentioned Spotify and again, we, we can move on. It's just, it's, it's weird. There are more and more, I believe in like the simulation, but it's weird. You mentioned Spotify. <laughs> One of the reasons I'm so bullish is I'm a huge Joe Rogan fan, which oddly enough, I'm wearing an on it shirt right now, which is his, his company. So, but, but again, I just look at stuff, stuff like Spotify, 52 week highs, you sign a name like Joe Rogan, maybe the, you know, the biggest guy on the planet to bros like me. It's like, it just makes sense, you know? So it makes sense only if the stock had dropped. All bets are off. So when sure. Google bought YouTube. Fair enough. <laughs> and I was doing Wall Street. I went, we did a man on the street the next day. It was 2007. And every single suit, every single person was like, oh, Google overpaid for YouTube. But if you went and checked the stock price, the stock went up. And so wow. whatever, it didn't matter what the people on the street were saying. The people that were right moving money believed it was a good deal. And so the same thing happened. They bought uh, the sports guy, uh, Bill... Uh, he Rogan wasn't the first one. They bought Bill Simmons like six yeah, months. Ago. Yep, yep. Okay. And so that was an interesting deal. So most of the the grinding by the analysts was around that deal. And if and if you look back at the stock price around that deal, the stock kind of went sideways. No one really knew. The stock went down. They were they really committed to podcasts. Blah blah blah. The, the, the market wasn't ready to embrace their mm -hmm. move. Wow. The market voted and it was like, okay, like you actually were losing money on the Bill Simmons. You know, if your thesis was podcast a year ago, you were losing money and you were questioning yourself. And this goes to like 52 week highs. So there was no, it didn't cost me anything to watch it, but yeah. I, as bullish as I was about podcasting, the price action was such that the market wasn't ready, didn't care. Wow. Now, I didn't know about the Joe Rogan deal. No one did what sure. Joe Rogan did. And the stock started breaking out a week before the week of the Joe Rogan deal. So what got me excited was just the action. And I love the product, love the stock. Then the Joe Rogan deal got announced. I guess I got lucky because the market mm. reacted positively to that deal. So it didn't move it on anything on the Bill Simmons deal, which to me is a bigger deal in terms of, you know, because Bill Simmons is a platform. Joe Rogan is one man. Um, so, so now you're, so that's why I think the stock's running. It's catching up on the fact that people were probably bearish on the Bill Simmons deal, but now that the market loves Joe Rogan, they already got Bill Simmons. Then they go get Kim. Yep. You know, they could go build out a financial podcast. Kar Kardashian, Kim, not you. I think Kim was flattered for a second, but it's Kardashian. I was. I was like, he means me. <laughs> <laughs> like they could go, but they could go for you know, a million dollars and lock, and lock down a whole hundred financial uh, 
So yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It, Call it, us, Spotify. Right. Check us, out at, Call check us out at SteadyTrade.com, Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> all the things with Joe Rogan to recommend for Spotify podcasts of financial, you know what I mean? Traders. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, the it's going to happen. So, anyway, so I'm yeah. very bullish. I can't explain to you the metrics of the market cap, but to me it feels like it can be a multi-hundred billion dollars the size of a Netflix company, and the stock was at 30 billion. So I'm like, okay. So in my head, I'm like, okay, it's 30 billion, it's overvalued. Price action's good, trend's good. So maybe it drops 50%. So yeah, so yeah I could lose 50% of my money. I probably would sell it before then, but my upside is six, 700%. Mm, for yeah. Just how a day trader would think about it is the move worth yeah. three or four times my money. As a trend follower, I'm like, wait a minute. If the market really believes this, this could be Netflix size. So I've got 50% downside for 500, 600% upside. I'll take that trade, even though it's not a trade, I'll take that trend anytime. Yeah, I have to constantly monitor it. And so that's how I look at, you know, what I do. It's not very sexy. And a lot of it is dependent on the mood and the environment that we're in. Uh, so now that's my, that, that leads me to a good question. Okay. I've been in this game, you know, again, I found you 2007. So, you know, 13, 14 years, whatever it is. Um, I've never seen anything like, you know, as soon as the stay at home order came and, you know, well, first we got commission free trading, then we get the stay at home order, then we get Portnoy, then we get the Robin Hooders. I no mean, sports. Have, no sports. Yeah. Yeah. You know, got, you got all these testosterone males with no football, no baseball, no basketball. I mean, I keep saying I've never seen anything like this, but I wasn't around, you know, I wasn't actively trading the dot com boom. I mean, what's your perspective on that? Well, it's everything that's dot com broad. You know, E-Trade, Meritrade, Daytech, uh, tele- with with way better tools, way better connection, way better, you know, uh, tools like networks to, like, talk to your friends about. Yeah. So it's it's the same thing. And, oh, and then, by the way, profits and the cloud. So, so the two biggest differences are profits. These companies have massive profits. Uh, they have even bigger cash flow. And maybe profits don't matter right now in a world where, it's about building the biggest brand you can. So, right, the market's kind of ignoring profits at the moment for attention and saying, listen, Amazon did this. Why can't we give the benefit of the doubt to Spotify and Twilio? Mm. And so you have that kind of wavering too. It's like, oh, well, maybe it's going to be the next Amazon. Right. Now you have something yeah. to point to and go, fuck, if I'm wrong, this could, I could go broke. <laughs> I'm not sure. So you have that. That's a different thing because in, 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 at the end of 99, Amazon went to like two bucks. Yep. So, so, so you can't be too cocky because that could happen again. But what makes this different than 99 a little bit is the cloud and the fact that these companies are profitable. Yep. And uh, so you had an endless kind of opportunity on the upside with the cloud combined with profitable businesses, combined with government printing endless amounts of money, uh, mm. combined with the choice of all these. There's not many of these great companies to invest in as a public investor, meaning you shouldn't be buying airlines in a world where you have opportunity to buy growth, even if it's overpriced. Um, you have kind of a perfect storm for the environment we're in now. And it'll, it'll end like everything else. Uh, I just, you know, I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Everybody wants you to worry about it. and oh, you're doing something wrong. And it's not good. And I don't know. I'm not, it's all noise right now. I think I, you have to stick with these trends while they're happening. And I'm, you know, Every day I wake up, I'm like, this seems stupid. It was up another 20 bucks. You try and be, you try and be responsible. You try and keep your ego yeah. in check. You try and realize that sometimes it's just silly. And you, you know, the, the markets hand you a little bit extra money and you kind of, kind of try and take some off the table, but try and let it run. Uh, and, you know, you kind of, I mean, that's all you can do. Just kind of yeah. try and run a strategy and try not to call the top and try and just kind of respect the wave. But you know the wave's going to end at some point. It gets ahead of itself, or I mean, it's, we're going to you know it's not going to last forever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the then, rocks, and then you got to paddle back out and look for the next wave, and it could be completely different weather. And it, you know, right now the weather is perfect for this wave, and yeah. and uh, you ride it. And yeah. it, doing other stuff right now just makes no sense. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to talk about anything else except. The things that are working right yeah for sure can we talk about stock twits though just because that 
I'm just really curious what you saw then and how you saw it. What, what happened for you at that moment when you were like, this is it? At that moment, I had just, uh, I was working at CBS. They had bought Wall Strip. Uh, I was screaming at them that uh, video was cool, and that's why they bought me, but that Twitter was going to be the new Bloomberg, and that Wall Strip was this national anthem. We made three minutes a day. It was a great video, but, like, what's three minutes? Versus Twitter, where everybody's hanging out all day. Yeah. So, so why don't we do the opposite? And you know, and I was, and they were like, "No, we bought Wall Street. Leave us alone." And so I had this, you know, pickle up my ass, just, you know, get excited about real time uh, uh, investing. So I, I bought myself out of the contract. You know, talked to Twitter wow. about like, "Wow, you guys should do Twitter.finance.com," and uh, ran to you know try and pitch them to like build Twitter for finance. And they were like, nah. And so I kind of, so this is just for all, all everyone listening. So this is back, you know, pre cash tag basically. Yeah yeah. 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 You know, now us degenerate, well, I say degenerates, I mean us active traders, <laughs> we're using like, we're using cash tags, but like Twitter didn't even recognize it at that point. You no, know? the idea was, I was like, all right, like I'm using Twitter, you know, I'm talking about stocks using the hashtag, but it was so full of like, non-contextual i'm not going to call it spam but you know, spam so you know i went to the store to buy a green apple is not hey i was in the apple store it's packed i'm wrong apple like yeah. how do you separate the chatter yeah because you can't so, search by apple you're just yeah. gonna get back then it was a blackberry yeah. you know there's no iphone so i yep, remember that's right you know, God, I blackberry I sent, I sent a uh, blackberry message to fred wilson with the dollar sign i was like oh dollar sign r-i-m-m going to the moon or whatever i said to him and he sent me back an email saying that's genius and that's where the cash tag, you know, because tickers are spoken in a language and we just, the dollar made sense money and it just worked. We did our first dollar sign in Twitter and they, and they were indexing for it. They didn't, they didn't really know what they were doing, but it worked. Wow. So if, you search, if you went to dollar sign rim in 2007, it would just pull up and it was just me. Right. Uh, <laughs> but then Fred started using it and like other people started using it. So we were like the first people to like do that. And that was wow. probably 2007. And, uh, and I think, you know, again, I know, you know, mm. obviously I'm a, I'm a trader guy. I'm also a tech guy, man. I think, you know, I just think back to that. It's like, I think, you know, whether Jack would and Ev would admit it, that cash tag, man, was a lot of fuel for a lot of people to come to Twitter. I don't know if Twitter would be what it is today, in my opinion, without the cash tag, man. Because it was I think if they had done – well, hang on. I would argue way more than that. I think Twitter is underachieved because they – it's actually cost them. Like, Jack's going to come around and I have a feeling like I've been having this thesis that Jack is going to roll square, is going to buy Twitter, um, you know, to piss – because it makes sense, right? Like mm. – Finance Twitter is worth more. Finance and sports Twitter are worth more than all the rest of Twitter. That that's my that was that was the yeah. point I was trying to make. Yeah, yeah. they'll never get that. Yeah. Jack you never know, gets it. Because Square is worth more than Twitter, and Square with Twitter would be worth a lot more. So I think you'll come around to that model, and he'll 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 obfuscate it or whatever the word is. Yep. So it is what it is. He's executed. You know, the boards have let him get away with certain things. You know, he's kind of an Elon Musk in that way. You know, Solar City Twitter, the Solar City. Tesla merger, I think Square Twitter would create the same kind of angst, but you know, overall, it would be a very interesting acquisition. Um, and you know, mathematically, it's getting to the point where they could do it. You know, Square is worth that much more than Twitter. So I think Twitter is a financial platform. You know, and, and again, that that was I was stu stuttering to kind of make my point. That that oh, wait, was, I, was like, I, I wonder if Twitter would be around Trump. if it Twitter wasn't Robin. for the cash tag. You know, yeah, Twitter's <laughs> already been Robin Hood. Yep, and there should you know tw you know you should be able to trade right from Twitter, and you can from stock twits. Um, so it's just all those things that I saw, and I'm not a technologist, but yeah, it was it's been a good ride. You know, stock twits yeah. is kind of now uh, very successful. Uh, you know, it took a while. It's not an overnight success, but now we're like we're defined vertical, uh, profitable. Um, you know, as of recently, and we've kind of like you learn to fight within your weight class, both as a trader and as an operator. And stock is not Twitter. It's yeah. not as big, but you know, we have a half a million people a day hanging out. We're pretty proud of it, and we're educating this next 
generation of investors. Yep. You can only lead a horse to water. You can't make them yeah. drink. So True. hopefully that helps you with this stock twit story. Yeah, it's a perfect story. I love it. Born I love out it. of it was born out of like, why isn't Twitter doing this? And yeah, that would that again. That was my yeah. point. I, I remember you know because I was there when it happened, and I, I remember I was probably reading your blog, and I'm like, why isn't Twitter doing this? Why are they letting Howard do this? Or well, I didn't know, want to do it. I was well, like, like <laughs> yeah, I was like, guys, like. Don't, you know, I, I know yeah. you're going to screw me. Like, I know I'm going to get aggravated. I didn't want to start stock twits because it's so easy for Twitter to do it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, listen, there's, they would look at it and go, eh, who cares? We're worth billions. Yep. And I would look at it and say, hey, when you have a chance to be worth billions and you're only worth, you know, thousands, that's a shame. And yep. I feel like the shareholders have, have gotten screwed on this deal. And again, you know, shareholders shouldn't own Twitter. I don't, I don't get the, the, I don't get Twitter as a stock because they're not executing well. So, so it's kind of like the mm -hmm. Abercrombie of, or the American <laughs> Eagle of social media, is like, just because it's a cool product doesn't mean that the stock's going to be great. It's definitely a, a place to start. Like I love Spotify, but they're doing the right things. And Twitter, I love Twitter. It's doing everything wrong. Yep. <laughs> so, stock's not going to go up until they do something right. And by the way. It, it, you'll know by the price action when they're doing things better. It ain't now. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. Know, Snapchat's sure. basically at all-time highs and worth more than Twitter right now. So Snapchat mm -hmm. is interesting. Twitter isn't. Yeah. And Snapchat's doing something that the people like. Yep. That's, yeah, it's funny. I, that's a, 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 another one I've been, uh, you know, talking yeah. about a lot on the podcast and stuff. I mean, it's you know, and again, it's just simple stuff. I mean, it's like all my kids use Snapchat. It's at 52 week highs a couple weeks ago. Now it's 20% higher. You know, it's like, it's just not that hard to figure out. You know, again, like you said, it could have not worked. It could have failed the breakout. You take that stop and you move on. But it's just like these simple ideas when I, I mean, my kids don't even text message. Everything they do is on Snapchat, you know? So, so yeah, looking over the shoulders of, 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 of people and seeing how they live and also just your own experiences is a good way to, to invest a couple more. I'm sorry. I got to hop a couple more questions if you have. Sure. Kim, I've, I, I've monopolized the episode. So that's okay. That's okay. I, think, I, 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 think can't, I, can I, I always do. So, so Howard, just so you know, I'm a huge fan I'm locked boy. at home. I'm locked at home. I can come back. I, I'm, okay. I'm a huge fan boy. So I, so I, I was, I've been looking forward to this one. So I do. So Kim, why don't you, you it's know, okay. take us out him, Kim, I, I, I okay. monopolize okay. the episode. So, <laughs> okay. Well, I think I'm just, I know you're a super investor, you know, a super angel investor. So I think I'm just curious, what is it that you look for when you're about to invest uh, as an angel investor? What are the things that really stand out to you uh, and that you feel a lot of people, when they give you their pitch, uh, they need to really focus on yourself and other people that are investors, angel investors? Yeah, the number one thing is it's like, just some etiquette is like, you know, in a world where everybody's you know, dating and projecting their image, you know, you can, you know, if you spend 10 minutes on my blog, you'll know what I'm interested in. So if you pitch me a biotech idea, I mean, you probably won't hear back from me uh, just because you didn't take the time to even know that I, like, what do I know about biotech, right? It wouldn't take you that long. So, but if you, if you're into financial services and making, you know, helping the next generation invest, I mean, I hope to see that pitch deck, uh, but generally it's the people it's, you know, and then, so it's always people. And then the second mm -hmm. thing is domain experience because, you know, if you're going to start a company, it's 10, stock to is 12 years. So, I mean, do you, do you love it enough to be doing this the rest of your life? Because that's what creates billionaires. And, and you have to be honest. Do you want to be rich? The founder has to be honest because, you know, why would you do this if it, if it wasn't first something that you were passionate about? Second of all, is the market big enough? Thirdly, do you want to be rich? Because if you don't want to be rich, you know, we're not doing this for charity. Um, so it really comes down to the people and then the domain experience. And then the next thing would be, you know, is, 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 there, is the product interesting? You know, is it a big enough idea? And usually that comes from domain experience that, that people realize that the, the idea is big enough that enough people will use it. I think with stock twits is, model i think maybe we just weren't a big enough idea and mm. i shouldn't have raised money the way i raised money so you know it's like mm. really i think a lot of things everybody's now excited about venture capital and, 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 and angel investing but not all businesses need it 
And I think we're going to see post 2018, you know, with or 2020 with the COVID, there's a lot of e-commerce, a lot of direct to consumer, a lot of social influencer stuff, and they can be really great small businesses. Yep. What's wrong with just having a right. profitable YouTube yep. channel? Not yep. Yep. So most of the time I'm talking people out of starting the business, just trying to like okay. coax them into, you know, like in Braveheart or something, you see people just sticking <laughs> knife in and they're holding them really closely and they're just like, I'm sorry to do it to you, but like better me than anybody else, you know, even an enemy. So yeah. it's like most yeah. businesses should just be bootstrapped and like convince your friends and family to be, to give you some money, approve a point, uh, which so my first advice is be nice even though you may hate your family, be nice to somebody. They may be, be, be nice to a rich uncle. That's, uh, that's awesome. you, that's means, right. you, may, you may get an occasional reach around from your crazy uncle, but like, oh, oh <laughs> God, for me. Uh, reach around, great way to end the episode. So, yeah. um, actually, well, you have I want to reach around. I've, I've got have... one, I've got, you can finish, Kim, but I got okay, one okay. point I want to sure, make. You got it. Based on what Howard said, I, so I had a business for 20 years. I sold out in 2013 and I can tell you, Howard, it's funny you say that. Worst thing I ever did was take investment money. I mean, we can talk about that. I mean, because it's and, and we were a great, we were a profitable small business and I, and my, my partner talked me into taking some money. Worst decision I ever made, we, but we can save it for next time. I, I, but I, I loved your point that said some biz, small business, you just stay small businesses. And I wish I would have. So go ahead, Kim. <laughs> uh, Ronnie Dangerfield in the Caddyshack. The world needs ditch diggers too. Now you can specify it, but, or you can realize that some, some businesses just aren't meant to need. And money. the baggage that came along because now, yeah, and again, we, we, this is a whole other discussion, but now I got an investor yeah. breathing down my neck and I'm like, man, I kind of remember the good old days when we were just bootstrapped and it was you and I. But anyway, Kim, you take us out. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, the painting that's on your, right behind your standing desk, mm -hmm. is that by chance Rhonda Goodall, the artist? No, if she's, if she's really famous, that'd be nice. The woman who, so the woman who's done a lot of our paintings and my avatar, Fred Wilson's avatar, she's just, she was, uh, I discovered her at Starbucks in Phoenix, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago. She was just 60 bucks, 100 bucks. She was a, a journalist at the Arizona Republic. Uh, and I just bought all her stuff in Starbucks and then called her up local Phoenix woman and just started oh buying God. all her stuff and she That's wasn't charging amazing. a lot for her and I was like kept buying and then she realized she was giving me too good a deal and quit. So now no. if she dies, I'm rich. All she needs oh. to do is deal <laughs> oh I send her I send her all kinds of bacon and things that will just try and mess up her stomach. <laughs> Howard, Howard, look at this painting. I'll send it to you, but this is a painting that my new artist friend Ron de Goodall just sent me. And when I saw your painting, I'm like this looks like the same artist. So anyway, I'm, so her, name I, is, uh, her name is Iggy, uh, Jenny Ignatowski. She's, uh, okay. We collect art, but nothing fancy fancy, but we have pretty good taste. The uh, art is more like a stock, right? Like you got to see something that other people don't Correct. see. You know, it's Correct. hanging in my house and I don't have to make yeah. money off of it. Yeah. I have, to, I have to look at it and live with it. And it's my Zoom background now post COVID. So uh, it's not my background. That's actually the wall. But um you know, art, art, you know, investing is, you know, art is kind of the same thing, right? It's, yeah, you know, for sure. For sure. And what's is, the whiskey? Value investing. And I like, yes. moment, I like momentum investing, but for my home, it's yeah. really, I got to live with it. I don't care what I paid. Yeah. Uh, I'm not looking Maybe. to sell it. You like it. You like Which it. It makes sense to me doing that yes. in the stock market makes no sense. Yeah. Yep. Makes so sense. I totally, it. totally hear that. All right. And then the whiskey, the whiskey that's on that. That bar, that little bar. What's the what's the best whiskey there? I think Blue Label. I'm I became a tequila. I used to be a whiskey person. I like tequila. I'm investing in a tequila company right now. Just to say, mm -hmm. I have tequila. Which I one? Tequila. I, I'm embarrassed. I can't re release the name, but it's a okay. good nice looking bottle. Uh, <laughs> anyway, just not not for my fun. Personally, I just wanted to have. A, I've passed yeah. a lot of booze deals, but uh, I like tequila. Yeah. I like uh, the taste. I like uh, whiskey. I just kind of, not for me anymore. But uh, I'm not a drinker per se. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, it's this, all this time at home and having so many, you know, porch meetings and friends come over. I've kind of enjoyed a sip or, a, you know, a little more. The world slowed down for me a lot. 
which yeah. I'm one of the lucky people that that's made sense. it's been good for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, if we walk the streets, it's not good for 40% of the population. Yeah. And for so sure, for much sure. to brag about, uh, but it, you know, I can't, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. My life, my life got simpler because of COVID. Well, you, yeah. give, you give a lot of advice out on your porch and, and, you, and you keep us laughing and you keep us from not taking ourselves too seriously. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I think, I appreciate that. that. I think the thing that I'm trying to is you have, if you can't laugh, I mean, people see through this stuff. I think why I get away with what I get away with is that really, Life is that you know. I saw Larry David yesterday, and I really yeah. uh, the only thing I was thinking about like the whole time was like, you know, I know he doesn't want me to bug him, but I know he's gonna like me if I go up to him. <laughs> totally. Oh, you're, I still, you're totally right. I still had like to it. avoid the urge, you know, and it was just like in my head. Good discipline. Is, in my head, the fantasy is if I, I'm gonna pitch him a show idea, and he's gonna we're gonna be best friends, and it's like Dumb and Dumber. But I, uh, it was a moment that I'm I in another world I would have run up to him, but. Uh, you know, you kind of, kind of will these things to happen. I think why I like certain people is, you know, Larry definitely gets the joke. I'm sure he, whether he's a nice guy or not, like I like yeah. people that just take a, take, you know, the English do it very well. They make fun of themselves. Yeah. You know, and uh, Americans could do a much better. We used to do a good job of that. And the old comedians. Agreed. Agreed. You know, where I grew up with like Johnny Carson and these guys were Don Rickles. Don Rickles. Rickles. These guys were making fun of everybody and themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why you could laugh. Like Sean Hannity or somebody on CNN, you just get, you know, everybody's so offended. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Hopefully we can get through all that. But I have to be very careful with what I say. And uh, um, I still screw up. A lot of the time, but I, I get away with it sometimes because people, if you look back long enough, you see that like the intention is not to inflame. Yeah. Well, it's the intention, I think, is everything. And your intention is always to be a contribution and you're not. And you're never coming from a place, in my experience of you, from ego. You're coming from a place of like, this is what I see. Maybe you don't agree with it. And I'm okay with that. Like, you, you know who you are. And I think that maybe is what is necessary for I try sometimes I'll write something and I cringe and I you know and I'm just like oh, I'm gonna have to explain myself but I think if people are because it's not ego it's just like someone will bother me and they're public and I'll try and just like make a joke and it comes off flat um, that's the risk that's probably the yeah. biggest risk I take which means I'm not taking much risk uh, and I can you know but for me that's risque and yeah. uh, I try and think through how, who it's going to offend. But I also like the serendipitous of just sending it and seeing what happens. And 10 years ago, you could do that and it wouldn't be held against you. True. Today, I don't know. Little, you know, little, I look little forward to. I look forward to a day where we have more like Johnny Carson's and Dave Letterman's and less, you yeah. know, yeah. whatever we have right now. Yeah. For sure. I know you do uh, interviews only on occasion so that you gave us this time today. I'm beyond grateful. I know Tim is as well. He was so excited when I told him I got you. So thank you so much. Yeah, I love love talking about the markets. We didn't really talk about them, but I think uh, I'm happy to do it again when we can talk about the markets. We will definitely have you back on then. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you for me as well, Howard. And to everyone out there listening, if you're, you know, if you're listening on iTunes or on your Android, head over to steadytrade.com. We'll have, we'll link to all of, all of Howard's social media, his webpage, everything. So that way you can check him out. And, uh, Uh, And again, yeah, thank you for me as well, Howard, and and have a great day. All right. Nice to see you guys, Kim. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Howard. Have a great day. All right. Be well, sir. Okay. Aloha for now. Bye.